Good afternoon, everyone. Dan Foss, your ads are appearing in my videos. I support your company. We love CO2. That's the new ad campaign. I do too because it's plant food. And only weeks after David Taylor predicted Australia's heading into a record cold winter, snow. Weeks or months early, however you determine it. Super early frost being reported in the media. These images sent to me by a viewer of mine. And then in the same news article, temperatures are generally too warm for snowfall. Wait a second, it just snowed. Going back February 2nd, Queensland recorded lowest February temperatures on record. Yeah, that was just a couple months ago. In Brazil, Belo Horizonte had a month's worth of rain in nine days. And then the floods came in the middle of the month. And over to eastern Thailand, freak storms in the middle of the dry season. And Carlos Ramirez has put out his new cosmic ray count. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. This video is brought to you by our friends at trueleafmarket.com. Heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet. You'll find that link in the description box, as well as links to all the other stories that I'm talking about and referencing in this video. I've had more than a handful of my viewers write me and say, oh, you got to check out this Dan Foss ad. They're talking about CO2 in front of there. So I went on their website. Lo and behold, new advertising campaign. We love CO2 because it's going to save you energy. It's about one of their multi-ejector solutions. Well, for me, I understand it's not CO2. It's not you. It's the sun driving our climate. So I support this. So let's jump down to Australia. David Taylor who runs the Brisbane Weather and East Coast Weather Facebook pages, predicting using sunspots that Australia is on tap for an all-time record cold winter. And here we are just weeks after that, earlier than normal autumn snowfalls, cold snap brings the first snow. Take a look at some of the frost here. This is not snow, this is the frost. This is the snow. Now what's interesting when you're going through the article that's associated with this, it talks about still 11 weeks away until the start of the ski season. And then it continues on that it would even be considered early snow even in late April. So they're looking at something that's happening at least five to six weeks earlier than normal. Well, unless you're going into a grand solar minimum. But then further down in the article, I just stopped and I stared at this for a moment. I said, that's impossible. Can they write that? I highlighted it in blue. They're showing you pictures of frost and snow. And then in the same article, they say, well, temperatures are generally too warm for snowfall. Okay. It just snowed. An Australia Bureau of Meteorology reporting what they consider super early frosts right outside the capital a bit wide out here for you now also when you're looking for trends let's go back queensland record lowest february temperatures on record when did this happen oh february just a couple months ago now wait a second it was still you know at the end of summer at that time or we should even say in summer at that time and they were attributing it to lingering clouds and rain, which brings me back to the cosmic rays that are increasing across our planet due to a weakening magnetosphere. And this collage of images was sent to me by CF. Thanks for sending. I'll wide them out here for you. You can see the frost. It's one thing to see it on a forecast in a map, but it's another to see actually the physical effect on the ground. Whatever's happening down there, it is early and it's cold. And they're growing grains in these exact same areas where it is cold and below normal already. So look for some losses down there in those exact same areas. Jumping over to Brazil, another grain producer. Rainiest March in seven years because in the first nine days of March, they had an entire month of rain. Images accompanying the article. They also had a rundown on Belo Horizonte. It had been since 2011 that this number had been eclipsed. But notice it, 334 millimeters to 240 
too. So they just needed another 100 millimeters to break that record and go back to something in the much, much further back into the century mark. So Belo Horizonte streets turning into rivers after torrential rain with 76 millimeters in just one day, and it turned out to be about 200 plus millimeters in this event. Cars floating down the streets. So I'm going to put that straight up into the rain record right there as well. The locale A in the balloon is the location of the event. Now staying with this on flood list, I didn't know Uruguay had record floods in the south, and I didn't know Dominican Republic also had record rain causing flash flooding. Both of these events in March at the same time as this Belo Horizonte flood. I'm searching through the news for these types of articles, and I didn't even know about this until I came to flood list. So imagine the rest of the world that just gets their daily dose of news in two minutes off a mainstream media outlet. What kind of information do you think they're getting and equating to these weather changes due to the sun on our planet? Let's talk about another freak storm pattern. Now keep in mind, it's the dry season. It's not supposed to be raining until the monsoon season, which is somewhere in June. But they have freak storms bringing chaos to 11 provinces. And here's the list below. Uron Tani, Nakon Panom. Nongbua, Lampu. Where is this area though? Isan. Now you notice Lao and Cambodia on the borders there. So I found the rainfall totals for Roy Et, which is also on this list of provinces affected. Should be barely any rain happening at the moment. Flooding. There's definitely a causation of galactic cosmic rays exciting silica-rich magma chambers, which are causing these swarms of volcanic eruptions that we see across the planet, and also increasing cloud cover. You can do your own research with Svensmark, the cloud mystery, the base for a water droplet to form around. Taking a look at the newest charts and information released by Carlos Ramirez. And the trend already this year is up, up since January, and it's going to continue to increase as we get into this grand solar minimum and our magnetosphere weakens even further. Carlos, thanks for your information. He also has his own Twitter feed as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. The signs are all around. Are you paying attention?